Good morning. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. By way of announcements, we looked up and uh, Sister Shirley Berry was walking in, so it's so good to see her back today. We have missed you, uh, Sister Shirley, and it's just good to see you. Amen. Uh, we don't we won't forget, we have prayer meeting here Monday evening at 7 p.m. Uh, everyone is encouraged to participate in that. There will be home prayer meeting at Sister Barbara Jean Woolard's home. That's going to be Tuesday, August 23rd at 10 a.m. Upper room is on Friday evenings at uh, 530. Come out uh, for prayer in the upper room and participate if you can. And grief share, we're having grief share group at our church every Tuesday from 7 to 9 until November the 1st. There's a registration fee of $15, and the co that's the cost of the workbook. And Sister Yvonne Waters is leading the session, so if you have any questions, please see her. And Pastor's Appreciation, we are celebrating five years with Brother and Sister Bateman this year. <laughs> Amen. That's gonna, that is on September the 11th. We will have a barbecue cookout on Saturday, September the 10th. The church will provide the pig, but we ask you to bring a covered dish or dessert for the meal. If you plan to attend that, please sign up in the sanctuary main entrance uh, and list the type of dish you plan to bring. Uh, this year we're celebrating five years, as we just said, uh, that they have been with us. Let's make sure we let them know how much we love and appreciate them. Amen. Snow Branch Camp Meeting will be September 14th through the 18th this year. The services will begin at 7 p.m. Wednesday through Friday and at 6 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. The camp meeting will be at the Family Life Center this year, so make plans to be a part of that and attend as many services as you can. And ladies, there is a um, thing uh, that they did want to get out. If, you're if you are a nursery worker and you cannot be here, please make sure you contact somebody so that we can get somebody else into the nursery um, for that neck for that Sunday morning. That way kids don't show up and there's nobody down there to, to uh, get them. If you, Lisa Woolard is keeping it today and Jamie Alvarado is scheduled for next Sunday to keep it. So if, like I say, if you can't be here, please let someone know so that, uh, I think it's let Zach know so that uh, he can find someone else to, um, to take your place. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ha praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He is worthy this morning. Are you excited to be in the house of God this morning? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Our first prayer request is Sister Shirley Berry. So I don't know if it's a prayer request combined with a praise report, but we're going to continue to lift you up in our prayers and at home. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, Sister Ann Harris says, remember Brother Gary Harper. He's still in the hospital in Raleigh. Um, please continue to pray for healing and recovery. And I know it was Friday. Morgan was um, texting Craig and myself that his heart was just staying in AFib and they had to do a procedure where they had to shock it back. And he came through with that very good and everything was back in the rhythm. And actually he, as of last night, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sister Ann, but he was ready to go home. He was getting things in order. So God is, is moving in his life. So just continue to remember him in our prayers. Um, and Braxton, little Braxton, he's had a bad night. Um, so we want to continue to lift up this little baby um, that the Lord will just deliver him completely in healing in the name of Jesus. Um, Sister Michelle Waters says, please remember my oldest daughter. God knows the need. So we're going to join with her for that need. And also remember my sister's family, she says, for healing. So we're going to join with her for that. Um, and Sister Amber Latham is having severe vertigo and nausea, so we want to lift her up in our prayers this morning um, as we go into prayer. Is there any others that you would like to raise your hand to represent this morning? Hallelujah. Let's lift up this service. Let's lift up one another. But most of all, let's edify the Lord. Let's glorify his name. Let's speak Jesus over these situations this morning, over this service, over our body, this body. We are one mind and one accord, and it's time for us to come together, mesh together, that we are one voice standing united. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So good to be in the house of God this morning. Good to see Sister Linda Lane here. Hallelujah. It's been a while. We continue to pray for her. We lost Brother Sonny not too long ago, and we can continue to remember her and the family. But it's good to see each of you here in the house of God today. Hallelujah. Did you come to worship God today? Hallelujah. I just believe he's going to do something special today because that's just the kind of a God he is, right? Hallelujah. Stand with us, and let's take these needs to God in prayer. 
Holy God, we come before you today. Father, we thank you for the presence of God that we feel in this house right now. Dear God, we thank you, Father, for your goodness, for your graciousness. God, for your grace that you have extended to us. Dear God, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Oh God, we thank you, Father, for the very opportunity to come together to worship you today. And dear God, we will lift our hands to you. We will lift our voices in praise and honor to a great and almighty God. Father, there is nothing that you can't do. And God, we bring these prayer requests before you. Dear God, we thank you. Dear God, for the opportunity to bring them. Dear God, to leave them at your feet. Dear God, knowing that you can make all things possible because all things are possible to them that believe in Jesus Christ, those that believe in the power of the Almighty God. Father, we just praise you for your goodness. God, we ask you to bless this service. God, we pray for an anointing, dear God. God, an anointing will bring down the strongholds, God. will break the yokes in people's lives today, Father. And dear God, we will lift up the name of Jesus Christ before a lost and dying world. God, knowing we are situated on the edge of eternity. Dear God, we will worship you today, Father. And God, we will lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done. In the name of our Lord and Savior, we ask it this morning. Amen and amen. Can you just worship him this morning in your own way? Hallelujah. I'm so glad to be in, in his house and in his presence. Hallelujah. There's no place I'd rather be than in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let's sing and worship this morning.
seated. Hallelujah, Sister Jennifer's going to come around and uh, sing this song that we first started singing in uh, at Easter this year. She does a great job, but listen to the words. Hallelujah. What a God we serve. Hallelujah. I was a rich, and I remember who I was. I was lost, I was blind, and I was running out of time. Sin separated, the reach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you had me in your sight. So you made a way across the grave divide. Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owed. Broke my chains, freed my soul. For the first time I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. Be from the darkness into glorious light. took my place and laid inside my tomb of sin you were buried for three days but then you walked right out again and now death has no sting and life has no end for i have been transformed by the blood of the lamb Thank
Stand and help us sing it. Glory to His name. grateful this morning for that blood that was applied. Hallelujah. We were separated from an almighty God, but it was that blood that brought us back. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful for that today. Hallelujah. You might be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to his name. I'm so glad we're not here to celebrate a name of a celebrity or some famous pastor or some denomination. We're here to celebrate and glorify the name. Glory to his name. We're going to give in the offerings at this time, and it goes without saying every week that we do this, we do appreciate all the support that you do and give for the work of the Lord. Uh, may God continue. Not only may God continue, but I know that God will. God is faithful to watch over his people. How I many of you know you can't outgive the Lord? God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And thank you again. So we're going to ask you in just a moment. I'm going to pray. Uh, we still got the buckets out front, some in the back. So you just get out of your seat and come and give uh, your, uh, the Lord's tithe and your offerings this morning, missions offering, all that we give. Uh, we do want to celebrate. We got another award. I, I don't have it in front of me, but the uh, Church of God International offices uh, uh, sent us an award this year. I was not able to attend the awards banquet in, in Dallas, Texas, uh, San Antonio this year, and uh, but we I think we finished uh, number three in the whole Church of God worldwide for the size of the church that we had. So I, well, let's get Give ourselves a hand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So thank God for what you're doing, your faithfulness, and God will bless, and he has blessed. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we love you this morning, and Lord, as that song rang out, glory to your name. We honor you today, Lord. And Father, now we bring the first fruit of the offerings, the tithe, and we bring it and give it back to you. We're so thankful, God, uh, that you've allowed us to be able to make the money that we make and to be blessed the way that we're blessed, Lord. And all that's been accomplished here at Alley Good has been according to your faithfulness and the faithfulness of the people. May God bless each and every one of you. And everybody said amen and amen. God bless you as you give this morning. It's so good to have Sister Ellen back on the piano. Let's welcome her back. Amen.
Hallelujah. Choir is going to sing another song for the special today, and I believe you're going to be blessed. Yeah. 
shout Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Shout it out. Shout Jesus. Jesus from the mountain. And Jesus in the street. Jesus. I speak and Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Darkness, Whatever you need this morning. Enemy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus. And Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Over every enemy, and Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. There's power. There's power this morning. Hallelujah. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your Oh, come on, somebody. Bless the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. What a beautiful name. The name of Jesus is. Amen. Come on, lift your hands and bless him in his house this morning. Lord, we worship you this morning. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Oh, we worship you this morning, Lord. We worship you this morning. Lord, we worship you, Lord. Touch every heart in the name of Jesus. Heal every disease in the name of Jesus. Make every situation better, Lord, in the name of Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. The Bible said that Jesus has been given a name that is above every name. He's also a name which by men must be saved. It's a name that is above every name in the heavens, in the earth, and underneath the earth, there is no greater name. You know, I thought about it. They, you know, they bow down. They, they worship the Lord Jesus in heaven. We worship him here. And I'm telling you, in hell, they know who he is. And if they were here today, they would, incur they would scream out to us, you better get a hold of this man, Jesus. Amen. Would you stand to your feet as we read the word of the Lord this morning? Thank you all this morning. Very quickly, I want to thank all of those, I don't want to name any names, but all of those that made our ladies' ministry event yesterday, the yearly annual meeting, a great success. If you won't hear, you should have been here. We had a wonderful time, a wonderful meal. Appreciate those that cooked and did all of that. And we appreciate, uh, appreciate my wife. She puts a lot into that, not by herself, but um, amen. We appreciate her. Appreciate her playing the piano the last month. Now, I'm going to tell you, I've seen my wife pray more than I've seen her pray in the last month. She was praying for her healing right there, I'm telling you. But you did a wonderful job, honey. You really did, and we appreciate your willingness to do that. Amen. All right, I'm going to preach. You're standing. Let's, let's go to the Word. John chapter uh, 15. John 15. And I'm going to read verses... 18 and 19. Now I'm on, you're going to be clear for when you leave this house this morning. You're going to be clear. You're either serving the Lord or you're on the other side. The Bible says here that if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Listen now, Jesus, my words are in red, so this is the word, words of the Lord, Jesus. If you were of the world the world would love his own. Listen now, but because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. 
Can I say something to you this morning? I'm going to preach on a subject. The Lord gave me this this week, and I was excited about it. It just don't fit. It just don't fit. Father, as we bow the head and the heart, this morning, God, you have met us here as we've worshipped you. Lord, I thank you for the Sunday school lessons that was taught here in the sanctuary and those that were being taught back in the children's classes. And thank you, Lord, for what's going on in children's church right now, even as we pray. Bless and help them, Lord, this morning. But God, we look to you in this time of the service where the Word of God is going to be preached. And as always, God, I, I ask you, I, I beseech you, Heavenly Father, to anoint me with an anointing, God, that enables me to preach. But not only myself, but touch your people here that are assembled here under the sound of my voice and are listening uh, via the Internet. God, give them an anointing to hear, Lord, to, and let it be applied to all of us. And we'll be careful to praise you. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you as you're seated. And it, again, it is so good to have Sister Ellen back ministering to us on the piano and ministering to the Lord. And uh, we're just going to continue to pray that everything goes well with her hands. I want to remind you that Snowed Branch is coming up very soon. Uh, we'll be over there. We're going to be inside the tabernacle, inside the Family Life Center. Uh, we need you to show up every night. We want you to back it up. There's going to be great preachers. Matter of fact, I'm in negotiation with that young man that just was with us last week. Didn't he do a great job last? My goodness. Amen. We had uh, Brother McIntyre, got a, who was going to preach on Friday night, I believe. He was uh, he he has been appointed to uh, a position in Cleveland, Tennessee, in our international offices. So we're hoping to get uh, 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 Brother Adam to preach that Friday night at camp meeting. So I'm excited about that. Uh, uh, we'll we'll have other speakers. Brother Michael Ball will be there. Uh, brother, hopefully, Brother Adam and Demille's family will kick it off on Wednesday night. So to run Wednesday through uh, Sunday night there over at the uh, Snowed Branch uh, Church, but it's going to be inside the uh, uh, the their family life center. I want you to support that and pray about it and be a part of that, and we're just excited. Now, there's, some, there's something in the works to tear down the old outdoor building and build a brand new one, and we want to be able to do that, get the sawdust back under the floor. We want to be able to do that and hopefully be in there by 2024, Lord willing, he don't come back before then. That'll be the 100th anniversary of the Snowed Branch camp meeting and we, we we don't amen that's something to be excited about amen and so we're we're looking forward to all of that and we just want to encourage you uh to participate one more quick note michael ball uh will be preaching this week at the chocolate church of god in revival and i know it'll be a blessing to him if you can support that revival if you can't be there we're going to ask you to pray for him so a lot a lot going on a lot to be looking forward to and uh let's keep our eyes lifted up the lord soon to return amen all right, we want to get started here. I'm going to read that scripture again. Let's go back to verse 18. I want to talk about something. It just don't fit. And there's a reason why we don't fit in this world. And the main reason is, is because we're not of this world. Anybody ever had a baby or a child or a toddler that put on a pair of his daddy's work boots or, or put on a pair of shoes and they'll walk around the house. They'll, they'll be in their little diaper, or their little t-shirt or whatever, and they're walking around with a pair of boots and, and they're just so big for them and it's cute and we take pictures and all that, but it, they just don't fit. Come on and say, man. Now my son... Um, my oldest son wears a size 15, 16 shoe, and we were going to play some basketball uh, a couple, two or three years ago, and he didn't bring in his shoes, and I said, well, I, I got a pair of mine. They're number 12s. He said, Daddy, they just won't fit. And I'm telling you, there's something about being a child of God in the day and age or the world that we live in. We are never going to fit. Now, this is discipleship type of preaching that I help every one of us to the saint of God that has been serving the Lord for decades, to the saint of God that's maybe just been serving a few years or even a few weeks or months. This is going to help you this morning because we all can grow in the Lord. Come on and say amen. I want you to grow into this fact today that one of the most important doctrines of the Word of God is that we are not of this world. Amen. 
We're not of this world, and we're not supposed to get comfortable. We're not supposed to uh, 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 get uh, get acquainted with this world, and we're not supposed to get so uh, comforted in this world that we forget who that we are in the Lord. Because the Bible says here, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you, verse 19. And then he gives us the explanation here. Verse 19 here, he said, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. See, I've lived long enough to know that back in the, back in the day, amen, that the Pentecostal style of worship, holding his folks, were looked down on, uh, the people would look down their noses at our churches and our people come on and say amen. You say, why would people do that? Because we called them out on their worldly lifestyle. We called them out on the things that they were involved in, and they looked down on those tongue talkers and those that would run the aisles and shout. They called us holy rollers and we were relegated to the other side of the track. But I've come by to tell you now it's become in vogue and it's become uh, 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 pretty popular to, to be a part of the Pentecostal and charismatic movement. I can tell you why it's gotten popular because the world is creeping in and they're trying to ex- make us accept the things that this world says is is acceptable, but my Bible tells us to come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. We are called to be apart from this world. Come on and help me here. The Bible clearly teaches that this world system, now this, when it says that, the, it, 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 that uh, the Lord's talking about the world here, he's talking about a system, a world system that operates and is dominated by evil. It's talking about a world system uh, that operates against God. You know, let me tell you something. The the fashions of this day are worldly, and they are they are uh, bring attention to the uh, physical appearance. You know, it is amazing how bad uh, the the fashions have gotten today that what is acceptable. I tell my wife, I said, go get that young of mine some long skirts that she can wear to church. And my wife will tell me that you can't hardly find anything like that. Those of you that have young girls, it's hard to find. Y'all say, oh, y'all get nervous because the preacher's going to preach on clothing. Let me tell you something. Let's stay covered up. Amen. Let's stay modest. The world says, show all you got. Bring attention to yourself. But the word of God teaches us, amen, that a woman and a man both should live modest and drink. Come on and help me here and be modest. In the, we don't dress like the world because we're not of the world. I don't care what the fashion is of the day. I don't care uh, uh, what they say is popular today. What I care about is that what I'm doing and my conduct pleases God Almighty. I'm telling you right now, when you take a stand for what is right, it will be rejected by the world. But when you compromise with the world, they will embrace us and then they will begin to applaud us. I've often said, you've heard it from this pulpit, that any time a ministry or a preacher becomes popular with the world, you better watch out. There's been some compromise. This world system is against Christianity. This world system from the very beginning is set up to draw the people of God in to compromise. One of the first things the devil told Eve is that if you eat of that of that fruit, you will not you will surely not die. Your eyes will be open and you'll be like God. The world has constantly trying to drag. It's not sometimes a, 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 a besetting sin or some grievous sin that draws the saint of God out of the house of God in relationship with the Lord. A lot of times it is simply the lure and the draw of this uh, of this. Uh, Nasty world, come on and help me. It's the draw of this world system. Come on out here and let's have some fun, the world will say. Come on out here and do this. Oh, come on here now. You don't have to abstain from drinking alcohol. You can sip a little bit and still enjoy the world and enjoy the things of God. I've come by to tell the church this morning, either you're with God or you're not with God. There is no in between. I know some of us here, hopefully not here, maybe listening online, will say that I still want to kind of uh, 
straddle the fence. I kind of want to get out there in the world and play in the world and do what the world wants to do. But let me tell you something. The Bible said if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I'm going to tell you, you know, when it, it don't fit. You know why we don't fit here? Because it, we're, not, we're not going to be here but for so long. I've said this, I've heard this since I was a little boy. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. The world, listen, the world has gotten so goofed up out there, they don't even know which bathroom to use. The world has got so goofed up out there, they're trying to dictate what, uh, what marriage is and redefine what, the, uh, what marriage is and, 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 and redefine what human sexuality is and what gender is. They are so confused. Isn't it amazing to you or, in, or coincidental that the very things that God stands for, the world of God is opposed to at every turn? I'm going to tell you that they, they, there was a Christian school down in Florida. A big, big thing just blowed up down there on them. The Christian school said that if any of you are LGBT, trans, or anything like that, we, you're going to be asked to leave immediately. The news got a hold of it, and they act like it was the worst thing that ever happened because that's the way the world looks at it. Look at those Christians. Oh, they, they hate everybody. They're against everybody. They're, they're closed-minded. Uh, 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 they're, they're intolerant. They, I don't know about you, but if it means I have to be closed-minded to hold on to the truth, the eternal truth of God's Word, dear God, then call me closed-minded, call me politically incorrect, call me intolerant, amen, but when the road is called up yonder. Call me home. Come on, somebody, and say man. We're separate from this system, not the people. We we gotta we've gotta we're in this world, but we're not of this world. The world says, bring your children to a public library and let a drag queen teach them out of that book I look at the world and say y'all have lost y'all's mind that's what I say somebody say brother preacher you're preaching you're rough this morning you're hard to know I'm not I'm not of this world that's the way the world thinks I don't think that way the Bible said if a man dress up like a woman it's an abomination that's what the book says so if I walk by a public library and there's a man there and there dressed like a woman and, and the first thing I'm going to tell him, you're an abomination, you're going to bust hell wide open and he, they're going to hate me for talking. They're going to call that hate speech. But I'm going to tell you the world hates us, amen, because Jesus said they hated him and they're going to hate us. But I don't care because I want the love of God in my life. I want the approval and the stamp of God. I was created to bear the image of the most high God. There's always going to be this battle between the flesh and the spirit. That's why we don't fit. That's why we don't fit. We're not supposed to get comfortable in this world. You see, this kind of preaching is not, is not popular anymore. I heard it all when growing up. I heard this kind of preaching all the time, at least once a month. Somebody would get up and encourage us, don't let this world get you. This world system has a different theology than we do. All God. All paths lead unto God. My God, that's one of the biggest lies ever been thrown down the pipe. Let me tell you something. When, when Paul went to Ephesus and, and, and they said, bring on your God. Bring on that God. We've got in, in the city of Rome, there were over a thousand gods. What's one more? But I'm going to tell you something right now. God is not in competition. All the other gods will bow their knee. There is no other God but him. Amen. There's only one God in this God Almighty, Jehovah Jireh. Come on here, church, the God that we serve. There is a God of this world system and it's the, it's the devil. We don't fit. We're not supposed to become. Something's wrong when we get comfortable with this world. You know, you say, oh, we gonna, we, you're going to get clothesline here. I've never been a clothesline preacher. Somebody don't even know what that means. Some of y'all don't know what that means. 
It means preachers would at, at one point would get up and preach against certain things, preach against uh, the way uh, uh, external things and different things. But what they were trying to do is keep their people in line and, and let them know that there are uh, things that God is not uh, happy with and, and God does not approve of. And we, we want to be more conscious of approving, uh, being in God's approval than we are approval of the world. I don't want the world's approval on what we're doing here at Alley Good. Matter of fact, we, if we're, we need to be stirring something up so that the enemy, amen, has been put on notice that Alley Good Church of God is pushing forward in the things of God. There's always going to be a battle. The flesh pulls toward this world system. The flesh, you never, you, it's, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Let me, let me. Let me tell you, so I, I was reading some statistics, and I'm pretty, these are pretty accurate. It said the average Facebook user, those of you who have a Facebook account, not all of you, but the average Facebook user will check his, his or her Facebook 13 times in one day. Our children, the statistics are, and it is, I'll get to the adult, that our children are having at least six hours a day on screen time. Whether it's, an app, whether it's an iPad, whether it's an iPhone or whatever phone, whether it's a tablet, uh, whether it's a computer screen or a TV screen, six hours a day. Uh, adults are just about as bad. We have no problem. And you say, well, in, in itself, there's nothing wrong with all of those things. There's a lot of good. Come on here, church. There's a lot of good on that stuff. But when, when the people of God are so in, in, enthralled in being entertained, you know, one of the great ones, you can see everybody. And we take selfies. I mean, I do too. Me and my daughter went out to eat, and I, I posted a picture, Daddy-Daughter Date. A lot of people commented, and that was great. But it, if I posted every time I took her out on a Daddy-Daughter Date, first thing y'all would be calling me and saying, where's your wife at? Don't you ever take her out on a date? Yeah, we do. But we, we're in a society that, is, con, that is, is, is consumed, a society that is consumed with me, me, me. And I'm telling you the reason why we don't have revival in the house of God because if people prayed as much as they watched television and were on faith, come on and help me here. We would have revival in the house of God. I think it's about time. I know we're not going to do it. Y'all too hard-headed. But we ought to throw them stupid phones away for a little while, close them tablets, cut the television off, and spend, get out of the world, amen, and the constant drag that the world is saying, you got to do this and you got to have this and get on our face before God. That's good preaching. I'll tell you one reason why you're never going to fit in this world because God put a longing in you for eternity. Did you hear me? I don't have time to go through all my scriptures this morning. Peter said we're sojourners, we're pilgrims, and we're passing through. Did you hear what I said? This world is not our home. And see, when a pastor and a, a holiness preacher tries to get up and preach on, on, on not loving this world and not fitting in, a lot of times it almost falls on dead ears. But let some celebrity get up and try to uh, 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 instruct us on morality. Or a movie star. You know, I, I love watching that stuff. I, I love a sports star that's got... Ten youngins by 12, wives, 12 women ain't married to none of them trying to and, and instruct me on what morality is. Y'all ain't helping me. Cops being, policemen being murdered on, on, the, on the streets of America. And they're, uh, though, these celebrities and those, uh, those will uh, take the side of those that are resisting arrest. Can I help you with something? If you get pulled over, say yes, sir, and no, sir. Roll the window. Mm. Celebrities, sports stars. Instructing people, millions of followers on. I have. Z I don't have any. I don't have any social media. If I did, it probably. I probably have two followers: Kim and Annika. 
sports stars, millions of followers hanging on every word. That's the way the world is. They, they're, they're, always, they're always after something. They, they, they're drawn to that, uh, that fame and that fortune. And, you know, the older I get, and one of the superstars of the, of the sports world just signed a contract just this week, two years, about $100 million for bouncing a ball. Does anybody see the absurdity of that? Come on, help me here. Does anybody see the absurdity? Who cares who, who's playing can put a ball in a hoop? The man's already seven foot tall. He don't even have to jump. We're low. We're like in the theater of the absurd. It, it don't even dawn on us how absurd that this stuff is. Who cares if how many people like your post? What we ought to say is, God, is my life uh, satisfactory? Is my life bringing glory and honor to you? Are you first in my life? God is preparing us. I'm trying to hurry. It's, this thing she'll preach a lot better last night than it did this morning. But when I preach to myself in the hospitality room, it, it's always good. Best, preach, best preaching I heard all week right there in that room, back there right by myself. Y'all come by, you think I'm crazy. You're right because I'm not of this world. God's preparing us for eternity. There's a longing in our spirit. Peter said we're pilgrims. We're sojourners. We're tra- it's like if you left here and went and lived in another country for a little while, you wouldn't feel but so comfortable. They speak a different language. They eat different food. Their culture is different. They dress different. If you went to Spain or Brazil or went somewhere in Africa, the Philippines, just some, it would be totally different. You would be a stranger in a strange land, and you would have a yearning to come back possibly to America. I'm telling you, the world has a different culture than we do. The world has a different language than we do. Come on here. You get out in the world and you, you'll hear people cursing and taking the Lord's name in vain. That's not the way. We don't talk that way. The Bible said out of our mouth shouldn't come blessings and cursings. We speak faith. We speak blessing. Come on here, church. We're not of this world. We don't, we don't act like the world. We don't talk like the world. We don't go where the world goes. See, but the reason why, I'm trying to hurry. This world is temporary. Everything you see is temporary. Everything. But the things that we don't see are eternal. Everybody knows something deep down inside. We know. We know. We know that there's something beyond this world. Come on, lift your hand and say amen. We know something is beyond what is here? We can't see it, but we know God put etern- God has stamped eternity in the heart of every person. So t- today my message is don't get so caught up in this world. You don't fit here. You don't belong here, and you're not going to be here long. Brother James just passed away here just recently, sat over here, 97 years old. That's we look at that as a long time, but in a blink of an eye, you can be there. The Lord's prepared us for eternity. That's why we don't fit in this rotten world. This world, listen to me. The Bible said if any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Come on here. The Bible says that if any man loved the word, he is enmity. He is in opposition against God. Let me tell you something. You can go out of here today and say, well, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to ride the fence a little bit longer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to compromise a little more. I'm going to play around a little more. No, today is the day to draw a line in the, sta- in the sand and say, Lord, today I'm going to serve you. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to be the best Christian that I can be. I'm going to be the best church member. We're strangers. I'm closing in a strange land. Our home is somewhere else. Peter said in 1 Peter, he said, pass your time of sojourning here in fear. 
Jesus said the world would hate us. And it, all, it does. Can you hear me? We're living in a time that Isaiah prophesied when they would call evil good and good evil. Replace bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. If you stand for what's right, they're going to hate you. This would be considered hate speech, what I'm doing right now in a majority of places in, this, in America today. Hear me? What I'm saying today would be considered homophobic, intolerant. It would be considered politically incorrect, but I don't care because this world system is temporary. It's going to fall. The Bible said the kingdom of this world is going to become the kingdoms of our God. Heaven and earth are going to pass away, but this word is going to stand. Everything you own is temporary. Everything, all the money you got in the bank is temporary. Everything you got set up for retirement is temporary. That gold coin you got hid in your mattress is temporary. You say, oh, you're a prophet. No, I'm not. Dangers of loving this world, wicked people, and worldly people. The Bible clearly teaches, and I'll close. Sister Ellen, can you come back? The, the Bible clearly teaches that wicked people and worldly people and people that love this world are enemies of God. You've got to make up your mind, people, whether you're going to serve the Lord, you're going to love God and his kingdom, or you're going to love this world. Make your mind up. Make up your mind. What you're going to do. Today is a day of salvation. Make up your mind. What you're going to do. I want everybody to stand this morning. Would you bow your heads just a moment? I believe the Lord gave me this message this morning to preach to you, to preach to me, to disciple us, to help us to grow. Because as we see the day approaching more and more, this world is not our home. God's placed us here for a time and a season. You were created to worship and serve the Lord, to do the work of the kingdom. I'm not preaching against pleasures and entertainment. I'm not because there's things that entertain us, that fishing, hunting, and different activities and hobbies that we all have. Not preaching against that. No, no. There are things I enjoy doing with my family that don't have any spiritual implications at all. But in everything I do, that we should do, all of us, we should have a backdrop that it's all in light of eternity. Came by this morning to preach a very simple message. This world is not our home. We don't belong here. We don't fit. We're just here for a little while and then it's on to eternity. God's preparing His people for eternity. This morning, I want you to search your hearts. Search your hearts. If there's anything in your life that's not pleasing to God and God's dealing with you about it, I'm asking you right now, ask the Lord to help you this morning. Ask God to help cleanse you, refine you, let the fire of the Spirit of the living God touch our hearts this morning. You don't have to worry. Don't worry about the world hating you. Jesus said, the world hated me, they're going to hate you. But he said, if any man loves this world, the love of the Father is not in him. He said, any man 
desires this world. He's at enmity in opposition with God. This morning, let's make up our minds. Mine is made up. I got to get up tomorrow morning just like you do. Say, God, I'm yours. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to serve you. This, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the will of the Father. You say, Brother Bateman, I, what if I stumbled and get up, repent, and start all over again? Remember now, you don't belong. You don't fit here. You're part of a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a called out, a peculiar people, the Bible says. Chosen generation. And I'll close with this statement. We'll pray. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. He's not coming back for a worldly church. He's not coming back for a worldly people. When he comes, whenever he comes, and he's coming, he's coming back for those that are pure in heart, those who are unspotted and untainted from the stains of this world. He even tells us we can overcome the world, even our faith. You can live it, saints. People of God, this morning, you can make it. You can live it. God be for you. Who will be against you? Would there be one this morning?